What's up guys, FM Carol here and welcome to episode number three of the Building a Force series. Obviously we've taken control of York City, a team voted by you guys um, after a, a massive, massive uh, reply and votes. And yeah, York City came out to be number one choice. Um, last time we left you, we played the first game of the season, which was the game against Northampton. We've had quite a, games since, few, quite a, games, quite a few games since then. Um, as you can see, we had a, a massive crash out in Nottingham, the Nottingham Forest game in the Capital One Cup first round, which is fair enough. Obviously, they're in the championships with two divisions above us. I was quite shocked to actually even score, let alone to, um, yeah, to, to well, I, I, not to anything. I was shocked that we scored, but we did lose 4-2. Um, Adam Dugdale and Erhan Ostuma with the goals um, for us. Blackstock got two, Majewski got one, and then Arrowsmith as well for Nottingham Forest so a little bit of a shame obviously we weren't expected to do very well in this competition and especially as we got um, Nottingham Forest a tough draw in the first round um, it was, I wasn't too too saddened by it but my main focus is obviously the league and maybe the Johnston Paint Trophy if we can get anywhere in it obviously that game's coming up very very soon uh, that was going to be the game that we were going to cover the Johnston Paint Trophy but it was moved back um, or some games were moved forward I can't really remember I think it was moved back um, but we had the Wiccan game after that and we won 2 0, a nice, decent result against Wickham. Uh, Wes Fletcher with both of the goals, so a clean sheet as well, which is good. And then look at this just a surreal game. Um, it must have been something about Accrington the way they set up because literally the whole game we changed things. We, well, we didn't change too, We didn't change anything from the, the from the Wiccan game. I know it was away, and Accrington are, are, are sort of predicted to do reasonably well. Or ish went reasonably well, and they smashed us seven two, and I could not get my head around this whatsoever. It just was one highlight after the other of them scoring and scoring and scoring. But at least you guys know that I'm not doing anything like cheating. I wouldn't show you something like this if I was being willing, if I was willing to cheat or anything like that. So seven two, we got absolutely torn apart. So the goal difference was massively impacted, unfortunately. So we had to sort of work that back. Um, obviously, a minus five goal difference just from that game alone. Um, but we did manage to turn that around in the next two games. We won 3-1 against Newport County. Um, so, yeah, two goals here. Um, Wes Fletcher with two and Michael Timlin with one. Um, Mark Byrne for, for Newport County was sent off as Lewis Neal got their consolation goal. And then we beat Southend comfortably re uh, quite recently, 2-0. Um, yeah, 2-0, comfortable victory. Wes Fletcher again with another goal. And Tom Soares with the other. So this is where it leaves us in League Two. We're currently doing quite well, even after that seven-two drubbing from Accrington, from Accrington Stanley. Um, yeah, we're sat in fourth place at the minute, level of points with second. Obviously, that goal difference has been a massive issue. Um, we are only we've only got plus two now, so it would have been a lot higher than that if it wasn't for that weird drubbing we've got. Um, top goal scorers: Wes Fletcher is joint second with Patrick um, Hoban for Oxford. Um, so yeah, not doing too badly at all. Uh, most player in the match is obviously Wes Fletcher with the amount of goals he's probably got. He's got two or joint top. We've got Tom Soares with the most yellow cards in the whole league with three already. Most assists, Josh Carson with four. So we're on quite a few of these lists, which is always good. Um, well, good and bad, I suppose, in some aspects. But we're doing okay. I wasn't expecting to have a, a good a start as this, but I am expecting sort of the good form to probably fall away. I know that we're... Um, not we're predicted to finish 19th for us to be sat in fourth is quite good but we're already um sort of pressing for sort of top 10 if i could get top 10 i'd be very happy um, but i would i would imagine we'll be sort of in this 11th to 15th sort of position come the end of the season but we have got a good team we've um recruited really really well a lot of the, the new players that we brought in are not too bad and um, we've also brought some more in since we last spoke to you obviously the transfer deadline day has now gone we got a lot of our business done early on so um, as to the signings that were since we actually updated you there hasn't been that many um, we've recently had Louis Rowley who is the left back I think I mentioned in the previous episode we were looking to go for him um, obviously ex-Man United this guy youth prospect for Man United is our backup left back um, yeah, Louis Rowley is not too bad actually. He's pretty much across the board. I quite like his physical stats, bar his strength, but he's only 20 years old. Obviously, he was at United for three years, then went to Leicester on a free, and has since then joined ourselves on a free. Um, we've actually got a contract there with a trigger extension, so we're going to do that. Um, that's one little trick that I always do if they sort of only want a, 
an extension, a contract to a certain amount of time. Just throw in an extension um, that could be triggered by the club, and normally they don't, they're not bothered by it. So we'll trigger that extension. It will extend it to 2018, um, and then if we need to get rid of him, we will need we will sell him. Obviously, hopefully at a profit. Well, if we sell him for anything, it's a profit. Um, Andrew Burns also joined on a free transfer. He's going to be our backup right back. Very very similar stats to Louis Rowley. Um, again, another young Englishman. Very very low wages um, his value is quite small obviously since signing on a free but yeah good decent right back back up back up right back um, yeah so just two, the two players coming in since we last left you uh, we've also had Rich De Groot um, he's gone out on loan one of the um, youngsters that are obviously with the York under 18s um, he's been on he's been here since he started really went on loan to Marine then Nantwich um, so yeah he's gone out on loan again well, sorry, he's on loan at Nutwich now. Um, and that's all that's really gone on. That means, though, that we've got a few players in the under-21s, um, especially en uh, Ebo Ando and Lucas Kuna. Um, neither of them can play for us because they need a work permit, and they're on reasonably high wages as well. £1,300 Kuna. I was hoping that we'd be getting get him out on loan. So come January, he's going to be one of our main tasks is to get these players either out of the club or out on loan. We've got... Uh, the likes of Ryan Jarvis, he's out on loan currently. He does leave at the end of the season. In fact, we'll take him off the transfer list uh, because it stops any um, things going on. Although we might offer him out as on a free again in January. We'll see what happens. So we've got Sydney, Sydney Schmelz is obviously our backup right winger. Um, Jake Goodman is obviously first team. Lucas Kuna is off, unfortunately can't get a work permit at the moment and we will offer him out on loan soon. Then we've got Marvin McCoy and Craig Baxter who we're looking to sell. They both leave at the end of the season anyway. Um, but if we can get rid of them sort of sooner rather than later, because it was 500 and 600 pound of, of wages that we don't really need to be sort of throwing away at the moment. Um, so add that with Lucas Cunha out on loan, um, if we can, and Evo Ando out on loan. You're going to be saving yourself in upwards of nearly 3,000 pounds a week. So you add that up over the year. I mean, it's what 12 grand um, a month times that by 12. You know, you can do the maths. So. It's going to be a lot of money that potentially that we can save because the finances are healthy at the moment, but they're set to deteriorate quite drastically. We currently have a uh, we're in the black of eight hundred and ten thousand pounds three hundred and thirty four um, yeah for eight hundred eight hundred ten thousand three hundred four hundred thirty four pounds. So we've got just under a million in the bank or as in the balance, and then we have um, we're projected to finish with minus seventy eight point three k. So. Um, players being offloaded will probably be quite key for us. Uh, we've got a lot of under 18s that I don't think are really going to have a future with the club. Some, are, some I think could do, some I don't think will. Um, so I know these are just 80 pounds and whatnot, but I, I believe that we'll, if, especially if we can get good regens in come March. I doubt we will though because our youth recruitment is really poor, our youth facilities are really poor, and our youth training is really poor at the moment. We've got a lot of work to do, as I said. So yeah, um, but we've actually made profit on the transfer budget. Uh, let's go back to the transfers after the window. So we sold 13.25k and didn't spend a penny. So the board will be liking us for that. So happy days. Um, in regards to something that I actually checked, um, obviously, like in the in the first, sort of first one or two episodes, we went through a little bit of background in the club and things like that. But I was just looking at the facilities just before we started recording again. And um, I've noticed that we are due to move into a new stadium. We are in the Booth and Crescent at the moment, obviously, a capacity of 9,196 seats. Well, uh, 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 that's the capacity. 3,248 is that, of that is seated. So the rest are obviously stood. And we're due to move into a um, the York Community Stadium, it's called, on the 1st of the 7th, 2016. So we move into it at the end of, next, well, end of this season, essentially. Um, yeah, it's got a capacity of 6,130. It's actually lower than the current capacity. I know this is a really old stadium that we're currently in, Booth and Crescent, built in 1932. I don't know in the background behind this whether that, that this was actually something that was done um, during uh, during the save, like in the in the holiday season where we holidayed for the year, or if it's a real life thing. But I will come back to you in the next episode with that. Um, I don't want to go and sort of do it now and. and pause the video so I want to keep going but I'll check that and I'll, I'll come back to you in the next episode with that but the planned expansion I'm guessing because the, the the decrease in the capacity I'm guessing that means that that this new stadium is going to be 100% seated so the seated amount of well seated amount of seats 
the capacity amount of seated sort of ticket sale things the seats are basically there's going to be 6130 seats in the new stadium whereas there's only 3248 in the current stadium that we're in in Booth and Crescent so um, yeah the York Community Stadium we move into on the 1st of July 2016 so less than a year away we move in um, and yeah the youth stadium is currently the Wigginton Road and so is the training ground but yeah, yeah as you can see adequate junior coaching youth recruitment is very very basic so that's where we'll be looking to invest early doors is we'll be going getting the youth system set up that's one of my main things that I'm going to try and build I'm going to try and be as financially smart with this as I can I'm not going to be throwing money at some players I'm going to budget myself the whole way through right through to the Champions League I mean if we can get through to the Champions League on wages like of, of a championship club or something like that that would be my like ultimate sort of um, goal and I'd be absolutely chuffed a bit so yeah but moving forward let me know if there's anything you guys want me to cover one thing actually I do want to make you aware of is um, I think he hasn't come through yet but we're going for either a coach or a physio we asked for the amount of physios to be increased but sneakily this is actually another little tip um, tips for days over here at the moment <laughs> uh, yeah so we've actually asked for a new physio but that means obviously from the board um, it's actually classed as an other York staff member. So currently we have four, we, we did have four and four, but we now have four and five after I asked for a physio. Um, obviously a physio is classed as other, um, a, a, another member of staff, um, aside to sort of the specific um, specialisms in staff. Then we have the other. So obviously a physio is included within that and so are coaches. So now what that actually means is I could actually hire a coach instead of a physio. I know obviously we'd still have one physio and it's never great to have only one physio at the club and we've got quite a, a big large amount of play, a large squad sorry. Um, so I, I can't remember if this is, I think we've got it going through. Yeah so here we go, we've got Bobby Dixon, no this isn't Bobby, this isn't him. He's the scout that we've got coming in and Ian McCurry is the coach. Now this guy's going to be our shooting coach um, so that'll even out the coaching stats a little bit. Um, so this hopefully, if we go over to, the, over to our training and our coaches. Hopefully our shooting will be taken off so Br Barry Stephen will be solely on attacking and then the new guy will come in on shooting so we'll have four star attacking coaching going through which is absolutely unreal so we'll have tactics of four and a half star from ourselves and then um, attacking of four star. Hopefully the shooting will be reasonably high as well he's got that guy has 20 attack and 14 in technique so it's not too bad at all so hopefully he'll be a reasonably good coach in the shooting area um, and then obviously he can help out with fitness if we ever need to but at the minute we've got one fitness coach, one goalkeeper coach the idea is to have one for every single coaching method but we do need to bring in new physios as well, we've only got one physio um, so there's loads of work to be done obviously but we're just staying within our means at the moment and then in the future that's when we'll look to invest so there's a long long way to go so it's going to take some patience but I'm really really enjoying this at the moment even when we were off the air doing some of the games before even the 7-2 I, I, I'm, I'm I'm frustrated, but I'm enjoyingly frustrating it. Enjoying, enjoyingly frustrated? I don't know. But anyway, yeah, so we're going to get into the game now anyway. Um, today we are playing against Port Vale. They're expected to do reasonably good, I think. I think it's Port Vale they're expected to be doing really reasonably good. Yeah, they're expected to finish third as my phone goes off in the background. Um, so expected to finish third. Obviously, we're expected to finish 19th. So it's going to be very, very tough. Um, and but we are at home, so hopefully we can bring that to advantage. They've been playing a four, a flat four, five, one, a flat five in the midfield. Um, so let's hope for, hope that they don't sort of dominate us too much. Um, we've got Tom Soares is currently out on international duty, and he's due to return on the 10th of September. So at five days time, he's obviously with the Barbados squad. Um, so he's going to have to come out, unfortunately. Um, so we'll probably bring in either Crossdale. Or Platt, I think we'll go for Crosdale. Russ Penn's still injured, in, uh, still injured, unfortunately. So I think we'll do that. Uh, Sydney Schmelz, Sh uh, Schmelz is obviously on the right. I think we'll bring on Colson on the right hand side. Um, we've got Louis Rowley on, uh, uh, Doug Dale as well. He's he was really really poor in the last couple of games, so uh, we dropped him. Um, but we'll bring Doug Dale along with us. Have we got a centre back already on the bench? Yeah, we've really got Keith Lowe on the bench. So we'll bring Louis Rowley with us. Um, Jake Hyde, Louis Rowley, Andrew Burns, 
Don't, actually, we don't need to bring Rowley because we've got a, some, we've got Burns who can play right and left back. So let's bring Dugdale with us. It does mean we've got two centre backs though. We don't really need, but we've got a couple of we've got what a winger and two centre midfielders out at the moment or unavailable. Um, I'm thinking I might play Clark. Oh, Austin was doing not too bad. We'll see how we go. I think let's bring Jordan Clark. No, I'm changing mine again. We're going to go Oz Tuma. So let's submit the team. We're going on the counter. Actually, let's go control. We're at home. Um, so we're going retain possession, whip crosses, run at defence, higher tempo, and be more disciplined. Um, hopefully, they don't dominate, dominate us too much with that flat midfield five. Hopefully, one of their centre midfielders is more of a defensive player that's going to cover Oz Tuma. So um, Timlin and Crosdale don't get sort of overwhelmed with the amount of players that are in there. Um, but that's pretty much it. I think. Shall we play Keith Lowe instead of Goodman? Goodman's a little a little bit tired. Let's do that. Let's bring Keith Lowe instead of Goodman. Oh. Let's do that. Right, so that's pretty much it. So let's get on. We're going to play with a structured shape. We'll proceed to the match. So it's a 4 4 1 1, our normal tactic. I've never actually done a 4 4 1 1 before. Um, it's normally a 4 2 3 1 or a 4 1 2 2 1 or slash a 4 3 3. Um, a wide 4 3 3. So we're going to continue. Um, it actually said just then that can't be right, surely. We're 5 to 4 favourites here. That's very strange. What do you think I should do? Type mark and all them. Yeah, that's fine. Um, we're going to do closing down, down on the wingers um, and show on to weaker foot. We'll do all of them. Let's try and force the error, force the mistake, force a poor pass. Um, always like to close down the goalkeeper. Um, so yeah, that'll do. We'll go to the team talk. Carry on where you left off after a nice 2 0 win. They're expecting a draw um, slash loss in the last game. So the, the fact that we got a win was very, very good. So we kick off. We're currently sat in fourth place. And they are sat in 11th currently, Port Vale. Um, they are five points behind us. If we can win this, we could potentially go top. This is what we're looking at. So nothing's happened as of yet. They've only had one shot. We've had more. They've had more possession than us. Con weirdly, as we're trying to control the game. So here we go with our first highlight, and they have the ball. Coblenz has played a long, great long ball through to Nimley, and Low gets beaten, and it's, it looks like it's hit the bar. One thing actually to mention as well, our um, goalkeeper, Atkinson, um, he, he's not been doing very well as of late. He's missing a lot of shots that are straight at him, unfortunately. So, yeah, it's been it's been very frustrating. As here they come again. Um, I'm guessing that was a shot. <laughs> that was terrible. He is rubbish, looking frustrated. Why are you front? Oh, we go, composed. Seems complacent. Where's Fletcher? Don't you start. He's supposed to be one of the top scorers in the league we're playing really poorly I have to say I mean look at that nothing happening let's go aggressive I'm far from pleased really really poor let's start the second half just with that that is really we have not been doing very well at all so Fletch is, he's getting beaten to the ball way too easily right let's do something with it we're going to go attacking because we're having a little bit more possession now According to the, the down here anyway in the last five minutes, so we'll go attacking and see if we can do anything from it Fletcher's offside is anything gonna happen in this game at all? <laughs> it's gonna be one of the worst live episodes ever What's going on we've moved up to fourth apparently we we're already in fourth Well, I think we're gonna make a change Timlin's having a poor game Literally nothing's happening. What's going on? Timlin's having a really poor game. Let's have a look at this. He's also knackered. So let's bring in Platt. Platt's not very good though. That's the problem. Um, who else could we bring in? What are we looking at? Crosdale's having a poor game. Our, our centre midfielder essentially. We're missing our two best centre midfielders, which is really frustrating. Um, let's bring on Hyde. Wes Fletcher's not doing it today. I think that's pretty much it. That's what we'll go for. I'll tell you what, I was too much. Not good enough, mate. 
We're doing three subs. We're living life on the edge. Right, so we'll confirm them. Do something for me. A lot more to come from you. Looked happy, good. They should add like a thing where it turns green when they're happy and, and like like when you do a team talk. Right. Seen deep in four. What are you thinking about, mate? Right, so we'll play ahead. So we've had there's been no click up chances at all in the game. They've had a This is really frustrating that that's, this is like behind. Let's move this down here. They've du they've had double our shots. Team talk. I've paused that. I don't know why it's not pausing. There we go. We've dropped down to fifth place at the moment. Aggressive. Demand more. I'm going to go overload now. What are they doing? Is this going to go all the way to the end without a highlight? This is going to be the only highlight. Are you sure? Absolutely unbelievable, Jess. What, what is this? No way. You're a lucky boy, Atkinson. I'm telling you. Thought that was it. Crowsdale, what are you going to do? We've got 20 seconds left. They're playing very defensive at the moment, Paul Vale. Hide. Beat him. What are you, what are you hitting it from there? Clark, what's Clark going to do? He's lost it. Crowsdale, he's, going to, he's hit it as well. Hide, and he's hit it wide. It's actually saved. It looked like it was going about four days wide, but he's actually saved it. Anyway, we're going to whip in the corner. It's probably the last thing. It's cleared. It's in the box, and it's cleared. That'll be full time. And a real, real drab. Nil-nil draw. Do you know what, guys? Just because I'm a nice guy, you know, we're actually going to continue. That can't be the highlight. That can't be the live episode. Um, we're going aggressive and far from pleased. We should have won that. We should have won it. I don't care that you seem to lose confidence. You should have done better, mate. Simple as that. So we drew nil nil. At least we didn't concede, but they had more shots. Apparently, we're favourites. I don't. It's, sometimes the systems on these games wind me right up. But we're going to continue forward now. Um, so I'll see you guys. I tell you what, we'll do a live another live game for the episode. We'll continue through to the Mansfield game, and I'll see you very very shortly. Right, so we return to you on the day of the Mansfield game. Now, a couple of things I went to find out. Obviously, I mentioned about the stadium situation, and it is actually a planned thing in real life. I've been and double checked, as you can see here. If we go to the York City website. Um, the York Community Stadium is a real thing. It's being built currently at the moment in real life. <clears throat> and um, it says in addition to a new 8,000-seater stadium, which is not quite that many in the game. So w whether the numbers have got mixed up or it's just sort of a general number on the website. Um, but yeah, they're obviously getting, a, as you can see, a leisure facility, include a gym, a 25-meter six-lane swimming pool, a fun pool, training pool, as well as new sports hall and dance studio. So... Yeah, a community hub will provide bespoke facilities for the project partners with focus on promoting health and well-being for York residents and visitors. So they're actually investing in something that's quite cool. It looks like it's going to have um, some sort of training pictures as well next to it. So yeah, I mean that looks like obviously the cartoony 3D sort of graphic picture of what the plan of the look of the stadium is going to be. So yeah, brand new stadium guys. It just, it's not going to be one of the things that we're going to have to go through where we're um, obviously going to build, build, ask to build a new stadium. There's going to be one in place for us. I don't really know how much um, it's got, like a, an expansion would allow, how much of an expansion would be allowed on the stadium. Um, I know it's being built on a sugar cane field, an old sugar cane field. I don't know if it's a previously, like recently a sugar cane field, but it, yeah. So that's new. That's the uh, new information that we have. I'm guessing this is probably why a couple of people may have... Um, possibly said about taking over York because they're going through a, a, a new stadium but it is slightly less if we go back to the board as I said than the current stadium although there's only 3,248 seated so it's actually a fully seated stadium so the full capacity will be seated and it says 6,130 capacity um, so yeah that is completely and fully seated so that's obviously what they've aimed to do here um, although the capacity is dropping down um, it's actually going to be a, a fully seated stadium this time round. So I wonder what the capabilities of an expansion could be. We never, there's no way of finding out until we actually try and do so. I've not used any editors or anything like that, so I can't find out unfortunately. Um, but yeah, so we're moving to the York Community Stadium on the 1st of July 2016. Now, moving back into the important stuff, we obviously have a game today, um, and since we left you. 
James Atkinson, the goalkeeper that has been in really, really poor form, actually got injured and he's out for two to three weeks. Um, so I kind of thought, oh God, we might have to look for a free goalkeeper and just sort of bring him in because our backup goalkeeper is not that great. Um, and I wasn't really expecting an injury to our goalkeeper this soon on for this amount of time. Um, so yeah, it's hit us with a surprise, but good news. Something Obviously, I haven't done a lower league save in such a long time. I've been abroad or been in the Premier League. Um, as, like before the channel, I was always abroad a lot. I did, the, for instance, the Pentagon Challenge, um, where I was Jomo Cosmos and took them all around the world and went around the world and went to different teams all around the world and stuff like that and did the Pentagon Challenge. Um, but Which, by the way, little bit of a... Uh, sneak peek into the next FM 16 that's probably going to be one of the main saves as our will be a um, Pentagon challenge so anyway getting back into this so I actually had a look at the league and thought right okay well what can we do so I went over to the league and I thought hold on a minute why, why am I able to offer for loan and I completely forgot the actual loan window reopens on the sh you can get like short term domestic loans I think um, from the 8th of September to the 26th of November so that was good news. So we've obviously managed to get a lone goalkeeper in. And Joe Wildsmith has come in on loan from Sheffield Wednesday. He doesn't... I mean, his handling and his reflexes are much... They're the two sort of main preferences I like in a good goalkeeper. His kicking and others are a little bit lower than um, our, pre, our main goalkeeper, um, Atkinson. But he's not too bad. Uh, he's, our assistant thinks he's over a star better. Than Atkinson, so that's good news. <laughs> um, well, sorry, a half a star better, if less than a star. That's probably the better way of putting it. Um, so yeah, I mean, sneaky little coop. We're not paying a penny for him. His full contract is three hundred fifty pound a week at Sheffield Wednesday. We're paying him nothing. The monthly fee of nothing. He's just playing for us. The only the only thing that they can they they said that they wanted to have and was non negotiable is the fact that he can be recalled. Um, so yeah, but that means that. Going forward, we're going to have Joe Wildsmith. He's only a three-month deal. That's the, amount, the highest amount we could do. But that should get us through to January. Well, it will September, October, November, December. So it will get us through to January just. Hopefully Atkinson will be fit by then. But it looks like Joe Wildsmith may be our long-term number one. Another thing as well that I've mentioned is we were going for two staff members. Those two staff members have now joined. We have Bobby Dixon as a chief scout of 16 and 18. Really, really good level for a scout at this uh, uh, club like York. So yeah, he's coming in as our chief scout. So we now have the three scouts: um, Bobby Dixon, Andy Fern, and Aaron Ray. And um, the three of them are actually sort already sorted with um, assignments. They've actually got an assignments going through at the moment. Reason just literally started them. Uh, one in UK and Ireland that's doing the full um, the full whack. He's obviously doing the roaming scouting report that's completely ongoing. Then we have Andy Fern in England and Bobby Dixon in Scotland. Um, these are all trying to find players of a really, really decent level, um, at least four star and above potential. Um, so yeah, hopefully they can bring back us some decent players, and we can start to build up a bit more scouting knowledge around our sort of local countries. And then obviously when we get further up the leagues and start to look at getting promotions and things like that, we can maybe concentrate on expanding the tra the um, scouting knowledge and see if we can get some more players in from abroad. Um, so yeah, that's the new um, scout that we've got in. We also have a new um, coach, as I said. We actually opted against taking a physio. The, the board hasn't moaned about it, so I'm guessing it's just a, a little sort of, sort of in-game tip. Um, but yeah, we have um, a new coach. Where is he? Is it Ian McCurry? Yeah, Ian McCurry is now joined. Attacking a 20, fitness is 16, technical is 14. He is going to be a shooting coach. He came straight in and what did actually come straight into the shooting coach role which is great news, and he's four-star at shooting coaching, so absolutely unreal, really, really good move for us. It means that, um, where is he? It means that Barry Stevens didn't have to do both of these attacking and shooting. He now drops down to just attacking, as I said, four-star attacking coach, which is br um, brilliant for us. Next to work on, we've got ball control and defending. The idea would be um, a Booth Roy is a defensive coach. If we get one more staff member and get a ball control technical coach, that would be awesome. And then obviously in the long term we'll look at goalkeeping and fitness. So if we can, in a couple of months time, maybe see if we can approach the board to see if we can increase the coaches allowed or something like that. And then hopefully we can get one more coach in um, and then obviously look to expand and keep progressing forward. So we're going to get into the game. We're playing against Mansfield, as you know. Um, they are predicted um, to finish. It's really, really hard to go by. They're actually sat in second place at the moment. 
and they predicted to finish in 17th so it looks like an upside down table is down to their predictions but they are sat in second place so they're doing very well they've won five games out of six and um, those games were won is it going to work for me uh, that were won against I'm just trying to work this out now who they won against well, let's just go look at their schedule so well they've had a really good run so they won their first game they haven't lost a game essentially they've won uh, they beat Oxford, Dagenham and Redbridge, um, ACF, AFC Wimbledon, Bury, Notts County, Eastleigh, and then they drew with Luton. So it's going to be very, very tough for us. We're going to have a look at the team now. Obviously, Atkinson now needs to come out, and it will be... Um, where are you? Wildsmith will come in. <clears throat> so, I want to do a bit of a shuffle, if I'm honest. Soares is now back, but he's not fit, so he's not going to be able to come in, really. Pereira is still not fit either. Rowley's gonna. Have, I think we'll stick with what we've got, um, but I really don't like our centre midfield. Our performance has been poor. Tim Lin and Crowsdale. I think it might take Colson out and give Schmelz a run. Mister Schmelz, um, we don't want you available for the twenty ones. Get off. Right, so he'll come in the right hand side, Schmelz, and then what else we've we got? Tim Lin. Carson, Oztuma. Let's give Clark a run in for Oztuma. We're going to stick with Wes Fletcher in this game um, and see how we get on. But that's pretty much the team. So let's look to progress. We're going to go, let's go with counter. And we may look to control very, very soon. Um, we'll drop a little bit deeper and try and hit him on a high tempo, hit him on the break. Squad number will have to be given. Yes, that's fine. That'll obviously be given to Wildsmith. Um, we've already got, um, we'll go with 21, second number one. That's why I have him as 21, by the way. Um, but yeah, he's actually our first choice. So obviously Mansfield are favourites, four to five favourites. We are three to one on to win. Um, but yeah, Mansfield looks to be very, very strong. So they're going for a 4-4-2. Let's see what the assistant thinks. He thinks that just to put one player on his weaker foot. Um, I actually want to put all of them on their weaker foot. Let's put every single one. Um, closing down on the goalkeeper. I think that's what we'll go for for now. No one fancies us to win. <laughs> it's not great, is it? We're missing a lot of players. Well, I say we're missing a lot of players. We're missing our two key centre midfielders, essentially, in Suarez, especially. Um, we're still learning the tactic as well, so it's going to be tough, I have to admit. We're going to be going on the counter in this game and after our drab performance in the last game it's a little bit of a worry but Carson picks it up this will probably be the sort of smooth single highlight and it is so good we've gone past the five minute mark and we've not conceded that's good um, Wes Fletcher has picked up a knock that's not good We'll see if we can get him past the 30 minute mark. If we can get him past the 30 minute mark, he'll be able to last out to half time, hopefully. Then we'll maybe make a change at half time. Um, we've only had a shot. We've, had this, or we've actually had two shots now. Um, it's pretty even 50 50 on possession, as you can see. Um, we've, we're equal on shots. It's, we haven't had a shot on target, though, which is a bit frustrating. Where's Fletcher there? That, that knocks Wynum up. I think I might change. We'll change that at half time, I think, with Fletcher. As we have a corner, Carson swings it in and it's cleared. It comes down to Clark. Clark flicks it in low and it's saved on the line by the keeper. Very, very good save. That will surely be a clear cut chance, and it is. Keith Lowe probably should have been finishing that. As they're going to now come back with a free kick, they're probably going to whack this in, aren't they? Oh, it's cleared. It's cleared right down the line. Let's get out of the box. Out, 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 out. Where's. Mr. Fletcher, you're playing you're way too deep. I said to close this keeper down. They've obviously split their full backs. They've been given way too much time then. We're probably sat a little bit too deep. So they're gonna play it inside. Thomas is gonna play a long ball over the top and Bingham's gonna flick it on and he's easily just chipped it, almost tipped it over the goalkeeper. Rakish Bingham makes it 1-0 for Mansfield, unfortunately. Ah oh. So we'll see this on the highlight now in 3D, see how much of a it was a great, well, I say a, a hoof. It's actually Rainlet Thomas with a massive hoof over to Bingham. As he, yeah, he's just headed it nicely into the corner. You can't fault that. It's a very good goal for Mansfield, um, but not a great start for us. 
So, this should take us through to half time now. Right, so Wes Fletcher is definitely coming off. He's obviously injured. Um, we've not been good enough so far yet. Yeah, that's fine, I agree. Um, and we'll look at the tactics. Right, so I think, I'm think i thinking let's try and maybe control it a little bit. Let's not sit as deep. We'll do that, I think. Right, so second half. Hopefully we can at least score. We have had similar amount of shots to them, but we've only had one on target, which is a real, real shame. Um, I'm considering bringing on Oz Toomer very very short, shortly if Clark doesn't pick up his game. Um, Jordan Clark needs to be playing better. This is Dow is going to lose out, and it's gone through to Bingham, and it looks like they're two on two at the moment. Miller is onside. He's got support joined, and Thomas picks the ball up on the edge of the box. He's played it through to Smith with a great ball, and Wild Smith with a good save, and a smave. good save as well. And Carson clears comfortably. Um, yeah, still one cut, clear cut chance each. We've still only had five shots, and, and it's been ten minutes without having a shot now. So I think well, Jordan Clark's just picked up his game a little bit. Connolly with a throw in at right back. He plays it into Clark, picks the ball up. Don't lose it there. Connolly again picks it up. Is he going to get any support? He does. Tim Lewin loads of space in the middle. Plays it through to Hyde. Is he going to pick out a pass? Is he going to play it wide? He's going to try and take it round him. He's going to fail miserably. Tim Lewin into Crosdale. Loses the ball way too easily, Crosdale. Really, really poor from him. He's not having a good game. Miller comes forward. Lowe's going to do not get booked, Lowe. Whatever you do. Smith's going to pick it up on the right-hand side for Mansfield. Plays it into Randall. De Havilland into Smith. He's got too much time there. Bingham's unmarked. And is this going to be a penalty or something? It probably is. Miller, is he is he onside? Doesn't matter, it's 2-0. Not good. And I think that's going to have to force a change for us. Really, really poorly given away from Crosdale. But we don't really have much of an option to bring. We could maybe pull Clark backwards. Do that and then take Crosdale out for Oz Tuma. Let's try and go attacking. Maybe a little bit more direct. Our best Carson's not having a good game either, and he's supposed to be our best player. Oz Tuma, what can you do for us? I've got faith in you, my son. Do something for me. 2 0 down. It's not good. It's not good, but we are expected to lose. I don't want to expect to lose. That's the problem. We're dropped down to sixth place. Oh, Connolly's looking really, really poor. He's not really had a good season so far. We need to pick that up. I think we'll have to have an individual chat with him at the end. They're dominating possession now. Mansfield is not looking good for us. So we've got only over 40% possession. We haven't had a shot in the second half. Really poor. Let's try and get on the ball. Oh. Right, um... I think I thought I already already paused this, but you know, assertive. Let's push forward, boys. Let's try and get a goal, at least a shot. We've had five shots. We don't... Hearn's going to pick this up. He's going to pick across very easily, but it's cleared by Connolly, who's out of position. Timlin picks the ball up on the edge of the box. He's got nothing to aim for, and he's just smashed it against him. Miller's now picked the ball up, and very luckily, Wildsmith has saved us there. Just absolutely smashed it at no one. No no direction to what he wanted to do with the ball. It's cleared and who is that? Clark comes away with the ball. Hyde's going to pick it up. He's by himself. He's beaten the defender though. Defender gets back in behind him very, very quickly and very easily. Oztuma picks the ball up. He's got no support. And he's just been smashed and injured. So he's come on. He's come on for only a little bit. He's been on probably a couple of minutes and he's got to come off. So Clark's going to have to move back forward. And we're going to have to bring in Platt, unfortunately. Who I didn't really want to use too much this season. He's not as good as I like him to be. Very frustrating, though, to see Oz Tuma crunch tackled like that already. Here's Sam Lee on the edge of the box. Platt's going to play out a wide. Schmelz has got a very good position. And he makes it 2-1. Do we have a chance? Sidney Smeltz makes it 2-1 with a very good little bit of play. And it was actually Platt that played the ball out to him. Ellis Samney got the ball in the edge of the box. Platt in loads of space. Picks the pass very nicely. And Smeltz tucks it away. Right into the bottom. Well, sort of into the side. Past the goalkeeper. Beating him at his near post. Very good goal, actually. Nice little 
Immediate impact from Platt. Very good to see. But it looks like Richards gonna they're gonna be oh, and Hearn's unmarked and it's a simple goal. They've come straight back at us. When you've just scored, you're at your weakest. Really, really poor. Completely unmarked. Whoever was marking him has lost him completely. Who's it going in towards? Look at him. Who is that? Who is that? Very frustrating. Let's go attack and let's try and get another goal we back into it. See if we can bring it down to the wire. They're dominating possession once again though. And Carson's having a shocker. It really is. We're going to make a substitution. Have we Have we run out of subs? No, we haven't run out of subs yet. Oh, we have. Oz team has gone back off. Oh, that's very frustrating. Two injuries to two key players in this game. But we're 3-1 down in the 90th minute. We're in extra time now. Oh, this is not good. This should see it out. We've got 15 seconds left. Connolly's been had a really poor but poor start to the season. I think we might have to drop him in the next game. I've had a word of him already to tell him that he needs to buck his ideas up. I had a great ball into the box there. No one got into the end of it. And that's it. Full time. So we've lost 3-1 away to Mansfield, who are looking very, very good, to be fair, for the rest of the season. Um, and we were not great in that game. Um, not happy with performance out there. Although I was quite impressed with Clark. He come on and made a difference. That's probably one positive that we can take from it. Assistant can do the individuals. They're all looking fired up. So that's good. So whatever the assist our assistant manager just said, he said it right. But Josh Car um, Carson, they're having a 6.3. Really, really poor game for him. One of our best players. Thomas had the best. He was the best man on the pitch with a rating of 8.7. He got an assist in the game. Means that we dropped down to 6th place. On 13 points with 6 points off top now. Mansfield do go top with that result. So, I mean, if you're going to be losing to a team that are doing well, you want to be losing to a team that's top of the league, I guess. But, anyway, that brings us to the end of the episode. Um, obviously, we'll have the next live episode coming up in a couple of days' time. Um, I'll quickly show you probably who we're going to be playing. Although, the, the schedule and the transfer... Not schedule, transfer... Uh, the schedule of games does change quite often. But we will probably see you... Where are we? We're on the 12th. We'll probably see you on the 3rd. We'll join... If you want guys want to join us for the Grimsby... Away to Grimsby. Um, yeah, so I was going to do the Johnson Paint Trophy, but I think this episode's been long enough now. We've had two live games as well. Unfortunately, a board draw and a loss. Not a great. Uh, but yeah, Grimsby on the 3rd of October is when we'll see you guys next. Feel free to give the video a like. Feel free to subscribe to the channel if you're new and you want to continue to see more content like this. Don't forget we've got the Aston Villa series currently going that's proven to be quite popular as well. And then obviously the big one, the World Network game, every single Saturday, 1 o'clock. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for listening slash watching. <laughs> and I'll see you guys in the next episode when we take on the mighty Grinsby away. <laughs>